I know that you saw the broken circle, but I actually have made several, several circles prior to this, and I've been working on them for the last two or three weeks. When I first design, it would be much like I designed the small sculptures. I work on them on a table where I'm very comfortable, but at some point they have to come into a kiln. And in this case, I have a very, very large even heat kiln. So in my way of working, I like to work with the media. So I design the pieces in a basic way without totally finalizing my de design. I photograph it many times, but in many instances I don't. But the next step is I will take them, the pieces, I'll clean them, I'll have stacked them in one way when I'm designing them, and then I will break them all apart and place them in the kiln. In this case, I probably have another half a day's worth of work where I have redesigned the pieces essentially the way I had them in the first case. Now I have them tweaked almost to where I think they're finished. And I will come back probably later on today to finally decide where the last few pieces need to go, where I think there needed to be some type of highlight. And one of the reasons that I take so long actually in the kiln is the lighting of the iridized glass and the bullseye glass, uh, as well as the dichroic glass, shift all day long. So as I get early morning light, it's going to be totally different than when I get the light at the end of the day as the sun goes from the lake over to the, the hills that I have. So I actually will come in here, sit like I am, and tweak and do some very last minute design work. I actually have done this long enough that I know how, at what temperature each piece of glass melts, how much it will move, and at what degree that will happen to. So I will look at that as a very final idea, as well as stand and come and look and leave and do that over and over again until I'm absolutely sure that I love the design that I have and I'm ready to fire. And then I look in my book that I have all of my tests on and will fire it according to how much uh, texture I want or how highly fired it is. And so now in just a moment I'm going to show you some finished pieces that I've just been firing that are going to uh, be sculptures that will come to the shop. And one of them is going to party on the peak uh, October 1st uh, for a fundraiser for preserve Granberry. So come into the shop and see it. It'll be there soon. Thanks. I oh. would wait though. Okay. Oh. We're gonna be kind of picky with the wind, like if it starts it's, blowing. It, it doesn't sound, doesn't sound bad, too bad. Uh-uh, not okay. at all. So you're fine. Okay, I'm fine. Um, we were just looking at circles, but sometimes I'm still aiming for really large, large sculptures. And I basically use the glass as though it were paper and I was doing collages, so I layer it. And then, I, as I said earlier, I will determine how high or low a temperature. In this particular case, I've melted at a very high temperature and basically I've made myself a whole new sheet of glass. This piece is actually almost done. However, I am now looking to see how I'm going to start building the sculpture stand. And luckily for me, just the other day, uh, the gunslingers of the Brazos uh, were on the square doing their shoot 'em ups and Pecos Dave came in. And one of the things about meeting new people is ask questions because before I knew it, I found out he's a welder. So this week I'm going to go over to Dave's or Pecos and he's going to help me um, actually weld uh, the steel together so I will we'll have a sculpture stand for this. I had intended on doing it myself, bought all the equipment, but didn't realize that the wind was quite as windy as my mother had always told me it was and living on a cedar hill I don't want to start a fire so I'm going to again caution people that safety is is imminent and so I'm going to take this designed over to Dave's and get it welded so you can see this is in the rough and you can also see how I hope that you can see through the glass uh, however you'll want to come into the shop because as the light shifts, these sculptures just come to life. They're absolutely gorgeous. And then the one that's next to it, I have just finished. And this one is still potentially going to party on the peak. 
In this particular case, I tried something that I haven't ever done before, and I used, you have to cover your, your kiln shelf with kiln wash or, or kiln paper. And every time I have to vacuum it up and clean it up. And this particular time, I knew that I was wanting a cloud-like effect. And so as I was about to clean up all the kiln paper, I thought I could use that to give myself a texture. So I bunched it all up, flattened it all down, and now, although I'm not sure you'll be able to see it through the camera lens, it actually has just this wonderful flowing, textural, fluffy cloud look without it being too literal because I don't actually like my statements to be too literal. One of the other sculptures that I've thoroughly enjoyed working on started off as a project that was to raise money for Thistle Hill uh, in, in Fort Worth. And they allowed us tiles off of the Thistle Hill building when it had been through a storm uh, I think about 10 years ago, but I could be wrong with, with that. But I actually love the background, using this as a background, and I love the fact that there's so much history in it. So even though I'm working with glass and I'm, I'm still thinking about imagery and I'm thinking about the history of, the, of that particular place and I'm thinking about the history of my life and what types of architecture I like, etc. And in this case, I would actually just start playing and designing using this as my backdrop. And I will just explore what it is that I like about this piece and what it is that I'm just thinking in general. And right now, what I've been thinking about, especially because I've been working on the piece for, for uh, the Party on the Peak and for Preservation Granberry, is our history of Granberry and of the lake and of the influences that, that mountains and water and buildings and architecture have had upon my life. And that's basically how I do the design work. So I happen to know that this is my favorite piece of the tile and I love the circle that's right here that you may, may or may not be able to see. I'm going to want a layer to look. And here is some writing that they actually put on the glass to tell me what exactly it is. And I actually will use a little bit of sand, uh, oh shoot, not sandpaper, but <laughs> uh, steel wool. So let's start that part over. So here I found a piece of glass that actually has writing on it. So I'll stop here a minute and let and tell you that I would actually use a little bit of steel wool on this uh, to get rid of that. And I'll actually spend a considerable amount of times because this is how they're telling me what colors, etc. this glass is. So I have to be very, very careful because the residue of the glue here needs to be cleaned. And it doesn't need to be cleaned one time. It probably needs to be cleaned two, three, four times. In this particular stage, pretty much all of the glass is dirty. My hands have oil on them from the tools and equipment. And I'm not concerned about that at this point in time. I'm just enjoying the design process. And I'm going to steal something here because I designed these earlier and I know that I want this sculpture raised a little bit and I also am realizing that I want this to be raised a little bit. So this is going to be flat and this I'm going to figure out how I'm going to raise it there. And I already know I want to keep this point a focal point, so I'm going to continue design around this aspect of it. And to a certain extent, I did think some of this out uh, prior to shooting this. Or I might play for hours at this. And in a way, I will be coming back and playing some more. And I'm lining pieces up. I'm looking at the curves and how the curves intersect. I'm looking at the colors. I'm thinking of, and again, I am in my way thinking of mountains and how they're broken down and where the water is. And I'm thinking of highlights and lowlights and the same things that any painter 
draftsman artist is thinking about. And, and then a lot of times I will get to this point and take a break, go get a glass of water, go eat a piece of fruit, it's my new motto. Uh, or I'll come over here and look at this piece to where I've particularly gotten here. I'm now trying to determine just this little piece of glass right here. I know that if I melt these two together, I'm going to get a ridge right here. So do I want that ridge? Do I want that ridge on top? Do I want this to be a part of the, the base here and this is still raised from that? That I haven't decided yet. This piece that I was working on earlier, I know that I want it raised above this little edge right here. I love these lines. This silver glass is actually going to be a little further out. Reminds me of, of very old metal. And you can see it's moving and wiggling and this is where I was discussing that it's going to be a rough draft. I love this glass right here, but up here it's still lacking something. I think I want to repeat this because repetition is very important, but that means I'm going to go have to go find that glass and I'm not sure what, quite where it is. But this is the first stage of whether I'm doing it the size of a piece of jewelry or whether I'm doing it this size or to a circle or to the large sculptures that you've seen me work on. Uh, I just love it. Come join me at the shop. Thanks. My alter ego is a purple goat and she makes all this stuff. The technical term for what I do is called assemblage and because I am a hoarder it was a natural progression for me to start putting the stuff I hoard all together so they tell a story. Uh, every piece is saying something to me and I hope it says something to you as well. Um, I love my job. I go every day. I work really hard and uh, hope you can see the results of that. Um, you can find me at several galleries on the square or at my happy place where I have a make-believe audience telling me what to do.
Hi, my name is Stacy Watkins and we're here at your private collection in the heart of Granbury on the Square. This month we're featuring Polly Giselle who's one of the most uh, sought after glass artists in the United States. We're happy to um, feature her art, her art at our shop and also sell some of the most wonderful pieces like this awesome cross here. We sell big pieces and you know little pieces too. She caters to any need that you have. And I'd like to invite you now to join me while Polly and I explain to you how all of our wonderful art is created. Thank you. I'm here with Polly Giselle, and she is the glass artist that we are featuring this month. And we are so proud to have somebody as talented as Polly. And we're going to have her explain today how not only our process is created, but some of the um, uh, various ranges of pieces that she does going from unique, detailed, small pieces to very large commercial jobs. Polly, can you Sounds tell us about good. it? Yes. Yeah. We are in the home of a very dear friend of mine who has been for many years my guinea pig. So she has probably the best selection of pieces that range from very tiny all the way up to her front door and her shower door. And if you want to focus on the table here, you can see a lot of different carving techniques and yeah. really this is how I build my vocabulary. I um, experiment on little pieces. Here, may I hold that for Yes, you? please. I'm gonna, I just want them to see how wonderful. There's a lot of detail in a very little amount of space and tell me when I can turn it. Okay. And then on each side there's more design and on each end there's a little dog on that end and a bird on that end. Oh, that so wherever awesome. you turn these things, there's something of interest to see. Great. And look how intricate this cross is. Yeah, the crosses are, there are never any two that are the same, ever. Everyone is unique. That's pretty much true of every piece I do, unless requested to make something that is a numbered item. But uh, it, it keeps me from boredom. And Polly does all of her drawings and creations herself, and it, they're just amazing. And they're all hand cut, oh. so there isn't any machine work other than me holding the sandblaster. And if you'll follow me into the okay. kitchen. Wow, look at this. This is a table that was in their rec room for many years, and they just have redone the kitchen family area and it has moved up in its status and height to become the family breakfast table. What a great idea. So you can actually take something that you already have and turn it into something completely different. Correct. And the base on this was made by another uh, artist, uh, Wally Dean. And he created something especially for this table. And the uh, Gilmores are so happy with this piece. Yeah, we also have two of uh, Polly's wonderful tables at our shop, and Wallace Dean was also uh, the creator of the bases on those. But we're at Polly Giselle's studio, where all of the wonderful pieces are created, and no one really understands how much work goes into these pieces. And she's going to tell us a little bit about, or a lot about it, actually, what, how they're created. And we've got wonderful examples here because this one is in its beginning stages. This has been in the booth and has been blasted and it's in progress. You take a piece of glass, you cover it with a green resist that's adhesive on one side, draw your design on with ballpoint pen which withstands the heat of the blast and does not melt away. And then, when you've finished your drawing, you essentially draw it again, but this time with an X-Acto knife, making sure that every line is cut before you go in the sandblast booth. Yeah. So that all you have to do is peel pieces that are already cut as you're blasting. And you begin with what you want to be deepest first, 
and work backwards until you airbrush the last bit. And basically that's it. Basically that's it. Yeah, you can see how it's it's really very <laughs> simple, it's, but it's a lot of stages. Yeah, it's a lot of stages and it's very simple, but the way that Polly does it, um, how long have you been doing this, Polly? 30 years. 30 years. And what was the first big job that you had doing? With Aetna Life Insurance. Oh, yeah? And an architect friend of mine recommended me, and I did 150 glass blocks. And I don't think I'd be likely to turn the same kind of work out today. It was not my best hour. Oh. <laughs> Polly's also done... Um, pieces for American Airlines, uh -huh. the Venetian in Vegas, the all the Mary Kay uh, desktops right. in the, in the yep. front of her building. Yep. Um, Wolfgang Puck. Yeah, all of his Rest restaurants. Most of his restaurants, yeah. not all, but most. Okay, Spago's is one yep. of those, and yep. right. um, Stephen Pyle's restaurant. Yep, Awkward. Exactly. Yeah, what I've is, been very yeah. lucky. Yes, <laughs> well, she's very, very, very good, and we are very blessed to have her in our gallery. And so we're also going to walk over here. To this is for my eye doctor. Oh, wow. And it's a present. And these are eyeglasses. Oh, see? Here's the little nose piece. Yes. Wow, look at the drawing and how intricate it's that is. It's really, really fun. And, and it'll she be highly textured. Actually cuts out every little bitty circle that you're seeing in this piece. <laughs> it's just crazy. On one window in California in a restaurant in Malibu, I cut 10,000 circles one, one time. 10,000 circles? In one window. Oh my gosh. Now this is going to be a tabletop. Here we are at Polly's uh, booth where whenever she says blasting, she actually means sand blasting. That's correct. And we're not able to show it because we would be etching <laughs> the lens of this camera. So she's going to go, you know, in, and tell us about exactly what she has to do to go through the process of creating her pieces. She's already told us about um, getting up to the stages before she gets into the booth, which was the putting the butter cut on and shielding the glass and yep. drawing and cutting. So I'm going to let her tell you about. And when I bring the piece of glass in the booth, it either goes on a very large rack or I have a smaller wooden easel upon which I most of the time I chew the wood up on the easel and it's so beautiful when it's all chewed up but it all has to be rebuilt every few months to handle the glass and I the floor is covered as you can see in metal and these are templates that I shoot through at high pressure and low pressure and of course to protect me I put a helmet on that has breathable air coming into it and then change these face masks periodically depending on the pressure that I'm using. The sand goes in this canister that you see on the floor Much and like it's reusable. It's aluminum oxide. You pour it in, turn the pressure on, pull the damper up and it seals itself and it holds 50 pounds. So basically, you know, it is a very simple procedure. It's very painstaking and it takes a lot of patience, but it's not rocket science. What, what does the little, um, the little tip look like? Do you use different uh, tips yeah. or do you? I do use different tips and the one that's on there right now is relatively small and we can and I can go all the way up to things that are well there's not a huge one in here but actually things that would be about that big. Wow so one, what kind of effect does that give? This whenever? gives overall blast. Yeah. And it's a huge spray, and I would use it if I were covering something for privacy with nothing but sandblasting. Right. And no real artwork. Right. This is, the smaller nozzles are for the delicacy of the artwork. Okay. And so, and these are, ooh, these are some of the little stencils. Yes. And these are, this is a bracelet, for Not instance. Neat that I found on uh, in our import area in Dallas and I'll bring it back and pound it flat with a rubber uh, mallet and I just have more fun I get my jewelry kick and I don't wear it I blast through it <laughs> so you get the cool little design exactly and I get to go buy jewelry which is so much fun oh yeah and that 
Ooh, and here's the piece that I love. The, oh, that's a neat isn't piece. that a lovely piece? Yeah, let me see it. And, and I will hold things through, for instance, this. And then I will shoot that. And I'll have a really pretty circle with a band through the middle. Oh, awesome. And that's how a lot of the texturing happens. Ooh, great. And that's it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Polly. Um, thank, thank you so much. It's not exactly something you just go right out and do, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that makes it all the better to collect some of Polly Giselle's pieces. We also have Terry Jones, and Terry is known for his wonderful metal creations. Terry uses all kinds of great um, pieces in his art, such as tools from the 1800s, and he also has confiscated guns that he's gotten from Leon County from the drug raids. So his pieces are very interesting. He not only makes um, these beautiful horse heads, he also does small pieces like the snails and um, just all kinds of neat wildlife and just wonderful things to put in your yard and also around your house. In a minute, Terry's also going to give us a description and um, let us know how he comes up with his creation. I'm Terry Jones. I'm a metal sculptor from Jewett, Texas. I take found objects from our past and I turn them into treasures for our future. This pile of stuff here is uh, out of my warehouse. This is gold to me. To make a sculpture, sometimes we have to take found objects and rebend them or reshape them to make them fit the spot that we're trying to incorporate in. This is my part of my gun collection that I have destroyed for three different police departments. We take something bad and turn it into something good art. This is going to be a wall hanging horse that I'm making out of found objects that I have accumulated from everywhere. This is an old tank I found that I'm going to turn into the horse's mane for this sculpture we're working on right now. My sailfish here, he's powder coated. This is my spider. I'm on a web trying to catch his breakfast. You know, this one, one for breakfast. This sculpture here is called Confiscated. It's the first sculpture that we made out of confiscated weapons from uh, our local sheriff's department from drug raids here. There's 16 guns in this particular sculpture. There's handcuffs, there's wrenches, there's pliers, there's spurs, there's a little bit of everything for the imagination. If you just look hard enough, you can find it in this sculpture here. This is a miniature bull, it's a Texas bull. It's like the one outside, except it's smaller. It'll sit on your table. The horns will come off. 
This piece here is what I call a voodoo queen. We have a little on desk here. Go along this way. There's a fish on the wall here. There's a hog head here. This hog head's got numerous items. It's too many to count. Inside and outside. This is a large long, Texas Longhorn that's been powder coated. It's got spurs, it's got handcuffs, it's got lots of guns in it. It's just got a little bit of everything in it. Just too good to be true. This sculpture here was the first one I made back in 2006. I didn't really know what I was doing when I started, but I was just having fun. Since then, I think I've come a long way with my sculpture uh, techniques and what I've been able to accomplish. Okay, we look forward to seeing you in your private collection. You can also visit us on the web at www.yourprivatecollection.com or on Facebook. I hope to see you soon. Welcome to Tarleton's Langdon Center. I'm Joel Back, the program specialist here. And this month, we finished out our 15th annual Rio Brazos Art Exhibition. We had folks from all over the country and a lot of local folks. Uh, tonight at Gallery Night, we've got the winners from the Rio Brazos. So pictured behind me, Van Johnson, one of the Granbury Wine Walk Jurors Merit Awards. And you'll see some of the other awards um, that were awarded after this. Proud to welcome next month's artist, Patsy Walton. Her show will run from November 7th through December 21st when we close for the holidays. And stay tuned. Come for her reception on November 26th and also the Langdon Center Holiday Reception on December 16th. And followed right afterwards by the Melody Bells and Concert over in our concert hall at 730.